Healing crystals, skincare routines, knitting a sweater, fitting in jeans. With Katie and Sarah, no need to worry. You're on a lady journey. I that was I was listening the other day and I was like, oh my god, because you know, there's got to be other lady journeys from different time periods. I love it. I think it's such a fun idea. Like, um, remember, like Kellogg's cereal was a spa. Yes, yes, and they were yeah. into like giving women orgasms to like help stress. With their- <laughs> That's how Thank vibrators you. were invented, actually. Yeah. I read it was like in the 50s, you would go to your doctor and you'd be like all pent up from like vacuuming yeah. with your with your birthday <laughs> present. And your husband maybe hitting you. Yeah. <laughs> and then the doctor would just like masturbate you and they would just be like, well, that was my procedure. <laughs> Time to make dinner. <laughs> and so, but then the doctor's hands like got tired. Of course. So they, all day masturbating women. Yeah. So they would invent these like hands and crank <laughs> and then oh that's how God. the vibrator was invented to yeah to de-stress us i just love like, that like where did men know that their lady their yeah. wives were going to doctors that were masturbating them i don't think they cared you're just like dr stevenson is working miracles he's like whatever you're doing doctor yeah. thank you she's not screaming anymore yeah. <laughs> And then it was time to pop a pain pill. Yes. Oh, my God. So welcome to Lady Journey, everybody. Welcome to Lady Journey. We thought it would be fun to like discuss maybe what we thought would be like Lady Journeys in different time periods. Yes. A little bit of a nostalgia journey. And actually, before we get started, I do want to do a quick stone dedication to a new Patreon member that we had join. Nina. Nina, welcome. Thank, thank you, you, Nina. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon, Nina. And if you would like to join the Patreon, anybody else who's listening, please just do that. And yeah, and you get a stone dedication. Just like this. Now, this is um, a stone that we haven't seen for a while, but one of my favorite stones, the Kyanite. Nina, this is for you. Now, Kyanite is such a magical stone because when, when you touch it, it instantly aligns your chakras. Oh, I had no idea. That? Yeah. Give it a touch. Whoa. <laughs> Did you oh, feel it? <laughs> straightened up. Yeah. Yeah. So this is for you, Nina, wishing you alignment that comes easily from something that you didn't expect, <laughs> just like touching a rock. And thank you so much for joining your Patreon. Yeah, thank you to all our Patreon yes. people. Yes, we we need you. <laughs> we do. You, now, so there's so much nostalgia that's going around in the TikTok world right now. Like some, and I'm, I'm really into it because I love these different aesthetics. Like one aesthetic I've noticed is um, the Frutiger Aqua. Have you What's seen this now? one going around? This is the one that I always remember this from, it was on all soap bottles, like these little um, hand soap bottles from the 2000s and there would be like a little picture of a clownfish okay. and like a blue oh, background. Yes, yes, yes. That's the Frutiger Aqua aesthetic. So it's all over TikTok right now and there's a similar aesthetic called Frutiger Arrow, which is just that kind of futuristic landscape with like an air bubble floating through. Okay, that's so interesting. These are like aesthetics that you just never pay attention to until yeah. 20 years go by and then the whole generation is like wearing it and you're like I had no idea that that was an aesthetic. I didn't even know that was a thing. Well that's like I always was under the assumption of like what is 2000 style and I yeah. never really thought there was anything to pinpoint it but I've been watching all these YouTube um, video logs mm-hmm. and there's so much from that era that I was like that is definitely definitive from that era because it always seems like, especially in fashion, you're like, okay, those are flare jeans that was in the 70s. Yes. So it's getting regurgitated. So what's like new? And then you see like, I don't know, like I guess indie sleeves. It was talking about yeah. the proportion of being big on top, small on bottom. Mm. So the skinny jeans with yes. oversized t-shirts and big bags and a big leather jacket. I love yeah. it. I love all of that. One one that I'm really into is Utopian Scholastic. This is the one of like a lot of... Um, like high school textbooks or kids books from the 90s where it would be kind of like different pieces of objects thrown together like the I Spy books. Did you ever do those growing up? Like that's a great example of Utopian Scholastic or you think of those like ancient Egypt books that you would get. It's like a white cover and then a collage of like tons of ancient Egyptian stuff on there. And when I see it, I feel like, oh my God, I'm taken back to a time when the world was open to me. (laughs) It's amazing. Like I Spy books or not I spy I'm talking about the um the magic eye those type of oh, books oh yeah I um sometimes I'll get I like nostalgia but sometimes I will 
will make me go so sad. It's true. Because it's I pen. realize it's a place I will never get to cannot, ever again. You can't go back there. I, can't. <gasps> I, I will never know what it's like to be in the mall to see a magic eye. Yes. yes. Yeah. And being all that, that was, I didn't have any obligations that day. Oh my God, like, getting a pretzel and not yes. get, feeling sick from it. Well, like my whole journey in life, I feel like all I'm ever trying to do is to get back to where my childhood was. Yes. Meaning like I want to live on a house on a lake with a pool, have a kid that goes golf ball hunting. And you have not a care in the world. Not a care in the world. And you're just going to the store, picking out the new popsicles that are in. Yes. I want to do all that or get back to that where I was. I love it. I love it. And well, one one nostalgia that's really popular right now, especially on TikTok, even with people who never lived through the 80s, is the 80s. And they're saying it's because of um, the fact that it was a modern era, but we didn't have social media. So it's yes. like kind of this... It's the last modern area without social media. Yes. It's like you're on the cusp of like, there are still these kind of antiquated architects like the private eye, you know, or like the housewife. Yes. Before we are now into what feels like a dystopian world of like trad wives. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's horrific. I, yeah, it's weird. And it's also weird that I think we're, I think we're in the same generation. I kind of feel like I teeter on the Gen X a little bit. You're in like, you're in like the tiny I'm generation. I'm Yes. Where we're one of the few and you're probably the same way as like, we didn't have internet growing up. Yeah. We didn't have cell phones or smartphones. So we know both worlds. Yes. Yes. And we're like a dying breed of people. I saw this Nate Bargatze joke that he was, he was like, I'm from the 1900s. <laughs> like it is a crazy thing to say, to be like, I am from a completely different era. Yes. Where I do remember getting a computer when I was and in it was my the house computer, the house computer. And your dad would like brief you on it. Yes. Kids. Yeah, it's like no magnets no yeah. magnets by the computer <laughs> you're like but why the era of Oregon Trail being yes. like a, like cutting edge technology right and then I remember getting my dad was a tech guy mm-hmm. weirdly would never think of him being that way but like getting AOL yes and him talking about it and what did I what was the first thing I immediately did is I went into chat rooms and I told off color jokes <laughs> I think I told a pedophile joke in there once. I remember. And then I got shamed. Oh, my gosh. Being like, that's not funny. And I was like, sorry. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's such a better thing to happen than what I was thinking was like, then a pedophile is drawn to you. Like, (laughs) where do you live? It was such a blind world. You because now I know like what I'm doing, what the that area era kind of I don't want to not era, but like how you're in there. Do you know like computers? You're groping in the darkness. And yeah. That's what it felt like. And it like. was a culture I, of that. Yeah. It felt like I was groping in the darkness. Exactly. Yes. You're like, I don't even know how I'm here, but there's people talking. Yes. And I thought we were all like-minded. There was a naivety yes, behind absolutely. it. Um, so there was a lot of firsts in there that I remember. I remember one time thinking I met a boy and then I called and then I could hear everybody laughing in the <gasps> background. And then you were like, Kind of catfish. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's like that. And then being like, I'm an idiot. That what stuff, were they thinking of connecting yeah. with a stranger online? I know. And it's like, I must that, have been lonely. That stuff doesn't even happen anymore. Cause it's like, we're now through that era where everyone knows, except for yes. unless you're like a baby boomer and you're exactly. like, this is my boyfriend, Javier. And you're like, no, <laughs> that is a stock image. I just gave him $20,000. Yeah. You're like, that's some lady in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I know it was an era of like to catch a predator. Yeah. You know, it's like, that was a specific time in America where you, you know, you would just be like pranking a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was definitely a wild time. But yeah, there's a late and now there's remember GeoCities, the first yes. place to do your websites. People even recreate that as an aesthetic. And also when it's really fun to go look at like the Facebook interface for when it first started to what it looks like now. Yes, I was I it's so upsetting to see this, but I remember I get like notifications on Facebook. It's like you joined Facebook on this day in 2005. I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so and that was another one joining Facebook for me is like I guess I'll sign up and then 
that was a groping in the dark situation totally. for me as well. You were like, did he look at my profile? It cut to now they're running the entire universe. Right. Yeah. Like they own the solar system. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea that was going to. I remember getting a message. I was like, what's wait, what? It, why is there a red thing right here? Yeah. And then getting it. And it was JFL trying to get in contact with me. And you're like, whoa. I mean, I felt like that's where I felt behind. You're like, oh, clearly this is a form of communication that I had no idea. Yes. Yeah. I remember the first time I got a text and it and like months later I found it on my phone and I was like what even was this <laughs> it was on my flip phone that had a, like a camera in the front so I was like I, w- I remember when I got my fancy new phone <laughs> it was I was like posing with it in the mirror like yeah. uh, looking high tech <laughs> <laughs> when I'm like trying on my outfits, which was like my big hobby when I was in college. Oh my god! Uh, but the I- yeah, the idea of being like, "What is this?" and you're yeah. like, "Wait, what are you up to?" You're like, "Who you- are you?" you- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when technology happening before you even understand. Well, it. nobody briefed me. You're yeah. just thrown into it. Yeah, all this, and now I feel like I know it forward and backwards a little bit I do and I feel like also which is one thing that is I'm grateful for because I go to my grandmother's house and she's like I've been printing my emails to file them and I'm like we don't do that but my I, dad would print every email out and yeah yeah but file would, them and I'd be like dad you don't need to do this and then it ca- creates like a fear in them yes if you're like my files I'm yeah. like you could just google this my my Mimi was printing and filing an email she got from her friend under F for friends. I'm like, <laughs> the filing system doesn't even hold weight here. But like, I feel like better now because at least I understand how technology evolves. And yeah. so if you can, you know, maintain that understanding of, oh, oh, I got a new phone. Let me play around with it until I figure things out. Then that is a learning skill that other people don't have from other generations. Yeah. Um, but but I fantasize about the 80s constantly, I feel like. It's my favorite generation. And this is where uh, time period. And this is where Joe and I differentiate because mm-hmm. he there's I have friends and they're around the same age as him, too. I'm a little older, but just by four years. But for some reason, it feels like that's where the the generational gap starts happening. Yes, because it's a high school era. It is. Yeah. Because I just was, I listened to 80s. MTV came around right when I started making like memories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it felt like we met at the same time. So it was my life. Oh my gosh. And so the music from that era, I love, I still can't leave it. I I even still try to find new genres from that era. And then I end up like discovering that I'm like, oh, I like this now. And that, you know, like I'm, you know, Yacht Rock or something. Oh, Oh, my God. Yeah. I used to be into like Bajas, but now I'm into Huey Lewis and the news. Like, yeah, it creates it's just a. I think it's one of the most fun times besides the AIDS epidemic. (laughs) That was horrific. Yeah. But for some reason, it felt like. A lot of people were doing really well financially. At least doing middle class well. was doing well financially. Yeah, and like feminism was too. on like a femino- feminism was like on a new wave, the second wave of feminism, where it was like for the first time, like you can have a job, you can have your access to your own money. Yes. Like credit cards weren't legal for, I think I read this a long time ago, so I'm not sure if I'm 100% accurate, but I think it was 1974 was when you could first get birth control. Oh, maybe it was 72 and then 70. That was the first year that women were able to have their own credit cards. Yeah. Like how crazy. So then it was like, by the like, 80s, rent an apartment by yourself too yeah. to get on a lease without having a man co sign for yeah, you. Yeah. Like the 80s, it was like normalized. And that's why we see one of my favorite 80s tropes is like the power suit woman and the, um, the shoulder, shoulder pads. pads. Oh my God. It was just like women showing their power through their shoulders. I never <laughs> understood that because I feel like I have a tiny head. So it was never <laughs> something that suited me. And then, yeah. of course, you know, I'm in elementary school. I had no business being in shoulder <laughs> pads. <laughs> but I remember my friend's mom. That was her look. Yeah. And you could always see the shoulder pads peeping through the white T-shirt. It's hilarious. And I just remember being like, I don't 
I know I just was like I don't understand this as a look the yeah. other one that was big is like I also had friends mom that would pluck the shit out of their eyebrows oh my gosh yeah the thin the era of the thin eyebrow was the 80s and the 90s even 2000s I would say like the thin eyebrow yeah. reigned for Forever. a long time it was when the bushy eyebrow came back about maybe 10 years ago yeah with whatever the model Cara Delevingne because Brooke Shields rocked him in the 70s and early 80s and then we got yeah it went to thin again but yeah it was just like yeah shoulder pads was such an interesting it was like I'm a powerful woman but I have <laughs> I'm, I'm showing it through my huge <laughs> shoulders <laughs> like what a weird to pre- being like I don't want them to know I'm weak yeah yeah <laughs> they'll never know I'm a woman <laughs> Well, they have a lot of. I did a um, one of my wedding videos. I did on '80s wedding dresses, okay. and they. I love the wedding trends of the '80s too, where it was like this is where we see. And there's been like a little bit of a renaissance with this of like the, the like puffy. side the side puff. It's like off the shoulder puff, but like in the '80s, it was like the bigger the puff, the oh, more successful yes. the marriage will be. It was just gigantic shoulders. You, that was how you establish you are the alpha. Yes, in the room, like I am the Dynasty dominant one. In Dallas the ladies like Jackie Collins would always yes. have like the big poofy shoulders that way I love the I love the enormous gigantic 80s wedding dress and then the other 80s wedding aesthetic that I love is like a gigantic hat yeah like no veil I just have the hugest wide brim hat it was like we also had big hair back then yes that it maybe I wonder if that's also like we also are taking up space yes exactly I think it is <laughs> My God, with our what a shoulder brilliant pads insight. and yeah. like our hair. So we are here to take up space. We're here to stay. Well, that's what I was. I remember watching a documentary about Riot Girls, and, mm-hmm. and that was like the 90s, the bikini kill, and they would wear those baby doll dresses that like Courtney Love. And that was the reason why they were wearing that was a, a way to take back their childhood that they lost because of like sexual trauma oh that's interesting yeah or that i was like never oh moved past i just wore it, it. Yeah. i had no idea <laughs> I i'm just, a baby still <laughs> say, what i had no idea that had that background information on it yeah. like the baby doll clips and all that so that is like the fascinating thing about fashion sometimes the way that it gets started is a way to like it's like a a fighting back situation yeah. yeah well there was so much going on undercurrents in the 80s too i think like of course there's the aids epidemic that you know if you're a person just living a hetero life in the 80s you kind of don't know about it or you're not like really connected to it in any way but yeah and then they had the reaganomics of like it was supposed to be the trickle down so i yeah. think that one also that was also like a lot of rich people just getting rich yeah um they had the um, well, one thing I was reading about feminism in the 80s was like apparently they were trying to in the early 80s legislate. This is hilarious to me, too, like legislate sexual harassment uh, codes in the workplace. But there was like an insane backlash against it, which it's like, so wait, what? It's like w- women shouldn't be not groped. It's my that's the, so fascinating, like. You've seen that photo of the first woman running the Boston Marathon, right? And yeah. then there's men by running by her yelling slurs at her. Yes. And you're yeah. like, who's you, that's got to be somebody's granddad. You're like, granddad, you must be so proud of yourself. <laughs> I have to go down there and yell at this woman to make sure she doesn't yeah. run in the Boston Marathon. Like, yeah, my grandpa was standing up for what's right. <laughs> <laughs> to to the idea of like it's so funny to think of people being so on the wrong side of history like for yeah. us it's just like that seems crazy but men must have been losing their shit when we were like yeah. I think I want my own credit card yeah yeah I'm just gonna have my own job now and you I'm can't gonna wear handle a credit card yeah yeah <laughs> yes um you can't handle my shoulder pads. <laughs> I love the power suit. I love the whole aesthetic of the 80s businesswoman. Like, despite the fact that we know there's like, I'm sure an undercurrent of her being like groped by your boss and these stories behind the scenes of you being like, um, you know, relentlessly sexually harassed in your workplace. But like to go into your work on Wall Street as a woman with like your your face rouged to all hell. Yeah. Your giant shoulder pads, the suit, like aesthetically, it is so powerful to me. And it's like, like such an iconic look that I think like shot women like across, even, even until now we're still kind of going back to that. Yeah. But then it's always weird. We talked about the trad wives thing is like, 
being upped. Like it always yes. feels like once you have like a Ford moving, there's all of a sudden a back pendulum yes. happening at yeah. the same time of in another culture it's so true culture wars i yeah, guess is what we're calling it and there's that in the 80s too of like women i'm sure also being i think like that was more the 70s where women were like i'm anti-feminist like we we should be like you know cooking and baking which yeah. also love but we can do both but then yeah. to the 80s it was more normalized but surely there was still other people like you know blue blue eyeshadow is the devils yeah i also feel like so you probably could categorize my mom as like a feminist but at the same time there's undertones of misogyny in her feminism of like mm-hmm. you know like wearing makeup is what whores wear <laughs> kind of thing and you're like well also it's like artistry yeah. and kind of fun kind and of fun. so like that kind of I feel like there was mixed messages in some of the feminism that I was getting. Yes, like, look at her 100%. put her makeup on in the car, you know, yeah. dumb bitch. And yeah, then they're like, I don't know, maybe she's busy. Yeah, she's just, she she's wants just to going to work. Yeah, yeah, she's just going to work. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's really interesting where we look at like antiquated feminism where it's like, oh, women should be able to wear pants, but not make their own healthcare decisions. You right. Know? Yeah. Well, I remember, and also like looking down upon being like a cheerleader. And at the time, I remember being like but they're doing like gymnastics and it's like an athleticism to it that's really impressive that just because they are cheering for men they're like it has its own sport and I still believe this is wild that they still don't get paid on the, the cheerleading the thing NFL's is nuts. Yeah. You are as athletic as the football person. Right. Player. Whatever and they're called. Work, working. You're still working quite a bit. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's brutal. And gymnastics. I mean, talk about gymnastics. Like, talk about a job with an expiration date on it. It's yeah, like, you're, you're 25, 13, you're, you're blowing your knee out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're getting the twisties at right. 30. You're done. Um, no, one thing I read about the 80s, which I think is really cool, is that this was the first, it, it was such a consumer decade. Like, this was the year, um, I knew this from a long time ago, but when they first started doing gendered toys, like, gender became such a thing in the 80s of like, bo- boys have blue toys and yeah. girls have pink, but it was just so they could sell like twice the amount of toys. But it was also the first decade where they started selling luxury skincare and like anti aging products. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, because I guess now you have a new form of money you have a new form of money you are meaning like more people are getting rich yeah Yeah. there's like a like a burgeoning middle class and but i just love the whole makeup aesthetic of the 80s of the bright eyeshadow what's also i love to hear about the bullshittery of the um what's how it's being sold to you like you know like it individually wraps each particle around exfoliates and you're like well that's not it's scientifically so, true yeah, yeah. It's, that's not what it's doing it's yeah. not what it's doing but it's like yeah I, I think that that was maybe one reason like women are taking up space but also you know we're painting our faces with these wild colors yeah. it's more expensive and it's just another way to sell more stuff well do you remember skincare around that era of like do you remember sea breeze which it would basically just be like the harshest astringent you could ever put on your face yes and I was under the mindset if it doesn't burn it's not worth <laughs> Working. Yeah, it's like burning off the pimples. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or like putting Clarisol and all it would do is like dry out all of the skin around your yes. zit so you would have flakes Crust. around your big red pussy pimple. Oh my yeah. God. Yes, it was the worst. So it, yeah, it's just like it never, it's, I think skincare does get better, but it's actually disheartening to find out that that's when it was happening. And you feel like it's to better ourselves, but it was really just Part another way to make more money. Yeah. yeah. But that's why I've always believed. And it's really hard for me to say this or not hard. It's not really hard for me to say this, but like, I have always been like, I think you don't only need like maybe three products. I agree with that. I think that less is more, especially when it comes to skincare. And I was surprised because I was looking around at the 80s aesthetic for like clean girl aesthetic. Is there what was the clean girl aesthetic in the 80s? And it was just like a preppy maybe um, it, it was kind of preppy, but really it was more just like a prude like yeah. school marm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was kind of a look too of kind of like a. Uh, little House on the Prairie. Yeah, or like um, c- kind of like an intellectual aesthetic. But I think even those people were still like going out partying. Like you're not going out partying without your blue eyeshadow. <laughs> you're not doing coke with the cling girl aesthetic in the 80s. Yeah, nobody... I don't recall like not having people not wearing minimum makeup. 
Yeah. And, and it also feels like, especially like the iconic women of the 80s, um, which I think is w- one of the first decades where we see it's supermodels. These, yeah, like the supermodels or like the like Madonna, um, Whitney Houston, yeah, like the, Cindy Lauper, Cindy Lauper, um, even like Stevie Nicks, who's a different aesthetic than that big bold party girl. Like yeah. Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks was more like witchy, kind of like the drapey fabrics, but it was still like a uh, maximalist. Yes, it was. And such hers a, was ultra feminine too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of wraps. A lot of wraps. A lot of scarves on the on the mic stand, but 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 thin though. Thin, I think, yeah. was like the dominant aesthetic for women in the eighties, which I which I find interesting because it was like the one of the first decades of working out. You know, like buns of steel and yes. that. But then I felt like when it was J Lo brought the ass back, she shifted it to yeah. the healthier girl, the curvy style of the two thousands. But then yeah. it got to where you're like. Uh, we were like, oh, great. We got back to a body that's attainable to like another side of the spectrum. Yeah. We're like, well, I can't have big now I have tits to have and a BBL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that's also an unattainable body to yes. have. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's like, how can I get my ass huge? I'm just, <laughs> well, I want to look like a wasp. <laughs> I know. But the, but if you look at the workouts, some guy was telling me this. Well, it was a comic. And I did think that this was a weird conversation to be having. But he was like, white women have big butts now and they used to always have flat butts and I was like I think it's the workouts because like the workouts of the 80s it was like um Richard Simmons like sweating to the oldies buns of steel was the an abs of steel yeah were the two major workout tapes that everyone I knew had I was doing buns of steel during the pandemic and I (laughs) loved it it was so much fun well I've always wanted to go back to like old school workout like I want to get a machine that straps a belt (laughs) around me and shakes my butt like, yes, I want to find old timey. Like, remember step workouts? Oh my gosh! You, every mom in the suburbs had a little step workout routine with. Um, I love it. Leg weights. Yes, you yeah. Have. And you're just stepping up and stepping down to yeah. music. That's hilarious. I actually took a step class one time. And I don't was, even think I've done it a few times, and I remember being like, "This isn't burning." anything you're literally just stepping up and then like the the advanced move is like you turn around and then you step up again (laughs) yeah nothing was being burned and then also I remember trying a lot of friends mom's side job was aerobics being aerobicizing yes the aerobics like that's an aesthetic that's such an aesthetic of the 80s and I don't even think that I don't remember being like it's too out of shape for that class. Like it oh was gosh. very basic. Like aerobics is like <laughs> you're just kind of going side to side with a two pound weight. It's like dan- it's dancing like a white woman for an hour <laughs> where you're lightly yeah. tapping your hip. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, if you don't have two pound weights at home, you could use a water bottle. You're yeah. like, OK, so now I'm just there's no resistance whatsoever. <laughs> it's just flattening you out. You're just getting flatter and thinner. Yeah. And it's very low impact, though. I will say that it's good for low impact. That is true. Um, but I love the I love the fitness aesthetic of eighties of like the spandex, the off the shoulder <gasps> t shirt, the headband, and oh, the big wearing, hair, like tights under your leotard. Oh my and then gosh. a lot of people, this would be risque, but like a leotard that had a thong, but then you <gasps> wore tights underneath it. Yes, or like a leotard that you also wore like a bandeau top. Oh, underneath, so, so cute suspenders. Yeah. The, like, why don't I want to go back to that workout gear? Yes, at the, the leg gym. warmers, the <laughs> leg warmers. Oh my god, I love it. If I feel like if you went to the gym dressed like that now, because now I call the workout aesthetic lately that at the gym, especially fit models, they dress like Selena. <laughs> Like it's like one big outfit, like yeah. unitard, and then there's ruching in the butt crack. Yeah, yeah, and then like crisscross straps. It's everything to accentuate the waist and the butt. I know you're like, how is that even supporting you? Like as a workout outfit, <laughs> it's not a sports bra. But they're walking around the gym as if just drinking water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lightly dabbing, yeah. sweat off. The workout, yeah. the workout looks today are so it's such like influenced by the TikTok shop. I I, I also don't like the like the matching set. Yeah, where it's like it's so expensive to keep up with that. Yeah, and then it's like how 
often are you doing your laundry that like you just have the perfect set? I mean, I guess it's for people that have a washing machine and they're I'm mine's just like a mix a I'm mismatch like, yeah. of I've like, had got an old t shirt, yeah. got some I sweat look pants. like Adam Sandler when I'm <laughs> working out. I'm wearing like a lot of times it's just like oversized soccer shorts and a t shirt. Yeah. But then I, I've had in my mindset being like, you know what? I think I want to be the girl that has a workout set. But you're right. Like, I'll get it. And then I wear it five days in a row. And then yeah. it starts to look like shit really fast. And also, yeah. I bought it at Old Navy rather than aloe or whatever that high end. Yeah. All those high Lululemon. Lululemon. Yeah. yeah. Where you just spent $400 on your sweatpants. I'm not spending $400 on sweatpants. And they're not worth it. The, no. You would think, like, oh, the quality is better. It's really not. No. Then they use slave labor like everybody else. Like every, yeah, so you might as well just get the cheap just one. Just get them from Old Navy. <laughs> They're on the same. Now, um, one aesthetic that I love of 80s girls also is like the counterculture, which I feel like it's still, there's such a broad, um, the broad umbrella of the 80s aesthetic. It's like, it's still big hair. It's still loud. It's still flashy. But this time it's more like dark tones. Yeah, you got your, um, are you talking about like, like your Susie and the Banshees? Yeah, like yeah, the, the punk the world. Cure with his hair. Yeah. Yes. I've always thought that I love that look, but you cannot age with that look. No, no, you have to age out of it at a certain <laughs> point. Or you're like Marilyn Manson, like yeah. Somebody had like, a f- put a poster or an image of him now, and he's slightly, he's quite a bit overweight and old in the face. That was an AI. That was, was it a really? fake. That was a fake image. Oh, I really wanted it to be true. Oh, I but know. It was like I saw beautiful that you were like, pizza. The beautiful <laughs> pizza. I was like, that's so good. He's probably not aging well, though. I can't imagine that he's taking great care of yeah. himself. He's, he's like, like doing yoga. Like, yeah. please. He has a fake eye cover. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think of some other 80s aesthetics of like well, in terms of like women that I, I love. I actually think Almond Mom has come out of the 80s. Yes, yeah. The I my a lot of parents mo- or a lot of my friends' moms were always on diets, and I also think that carried over to a lot of my friends actually having eating disorders later. Yes, it it's was always the, been instilled in their mom, and it's yeah. not even like sometimes they mean to. It's like the constant doing fit checks in front of the mirror counting the calories being like I'm a, yeah. such a big fucking pig yeah where now I think we're more conscious of not saying stuff like that in front of our kids yeah like I'm gonna tr- Dick, I've talked about this with Joe like we always say oh my god I'm gonna kill myself oh yeah 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 and we we're of like course. we just gonna have to probably curb that kind of I'm going to end my own life <laughs> by my <laughs> in Oregon where it's legal but only if I'm suffering from an illness for a long time. <laughs> yes. But for every, and then the amount of like shit talking that I, we can do, I'm like, we can't do that in front of. Yeah, it does the feel kid. like thinness uh, is such a 80s thing that like the trauma carried over for generations of generations. Well, I remember when I um, tempt at that high end baby clothes store on the Upper East Side. Oh, of course. I never, I saw so many women in that area that I clearly diagnosed with eating disorders. Oh, yeah. Like so thin that I actually felt like that was considered a status symbol still yeah going on going over there i think it is yeah. because it's like you have to have a lot of time to be you know pr- and prepping your almond have, meal yeah. yeah and uh all the the orthorexic that's yes. that is a one for the wealthy yeah the fasting i only eat flowers yes <laughs> i don't yeah. i can't have that because that's bad for you and that causes has carcinogens and yes yeah. i saw something that was about um now uh, america kind of um commercializing fitness and lifestyle whereas in europe these things are like just part of everyday life so it's like you're getting up you you walk to the grocery store you buy your stuff you carry it back or you walk to work or you walk to the train so it's like fitness is you know that stuff is built into your daily life so they don't have a lot of gyms in like italy or france because yeah. people just aren't they're walking you know, everywhere yeah it's like here you like get you roll out of bed you f- fall to your car Oh my god! I would you drive in, in Houston. I'd be like, remember when you would eat a huge meal at a restaurant and then get in your car and drive ten minutes back to your apartment while you smoke a cigarette in your yeah, car? Yeah, yeah. You're like, I always smoke after a big meal. It helps me digest it. It's like drink some tea. I know. But that was my go-to, like always. Yeah. When in the suburbs, it's that you go eat a sh- big shitty meal and then drive. Yeah, yeah. And then and then feeling awful actually when i was in texas this weekend i did indulge in some gigantic detroit style 
brick oven pizza okay. the big squares oh my gosh it was so delicious i couldn't stop i ate i was just eating it over the course of a day yeah, like, we cold like that's pizza. my whole meal for i the week. felt so sick by the end of it it was just destroying yeah. like the oil the the um tomato sauce too it was like had like a meat sauce on it i if i eat this sounds so stupid to be like if I eat pizza late at night, I can't go to sleep. Yeah, like, no, but it's I have true, that. Like, though. I can't eat pizza after like a certain time where it's, I'm up all yeah. night thirsty. Well, I of course googled it, and it is a phenomenon. <laughs> it's like <laughs> pizza phenomenon that it just destroys your stomach of eating that much bread in one sitting. No, it's insane. And then it's also funny, like if you ever hung out with a, like people that don't eat well all the time, and then they're like, "I'm so depressed," and you're like, you're like "Yeah, like, I know you have what. to, you, you have, have to s- eat veggies." Yeah, yeah. If you tried walking and not eating pizza for every meal i know i know I, I see people eat casually like i love like oh nachos is my favorite it i consider it healthy a uh, health food <laughs> <laughs> well it does have chilies it's, and i've my protein is in there with my black beans and oh. i get a jalapeno in there and there's tomato oh and sometimes gosh. lettuce no those are not my nachos i'm talking i'm like chili con queso yeah. sour cream okay um more ground beef on top of it <laughs> Uh, but I love nachos. But it's like as I grow older, when I eat stuff like that or like fish and chips, like that kind of thing. Yeah. No substance. I only I'm like I only eat until I start feeling sick. Then I stop. That's how I keep myself. And then I go feeling. again tomorrow morning. Did you see that day. thing of Bethany that, Frankel? Did yeah. she say she only eats to taste? She only eats to taste and she doesn't ever eat until she's until she's full. And it's like, Bethany. That's, you can just eat and yeah <laughs> just eat well it's like kelly ripa is what i eat in a day they had to yeah. pull it from vogue.com or something one like that almond <laughs> her dessert was one chocolate covered almond well that's the thing you always like i was like that um you know i like the other day i see miley cyrus at the grammys i'm like god her body is amazing so i had she to does. look up what her routine is and it's mm-hmm. like veganism and then she does like two hours of these kind of like pilates or um Mm -hmm. slash yoga and you re you're like i don't want to do that yeah it's it's a lot of time and energy but she does look amazing that's her her body type is like that's what my i'm like i want that um but then you know there's other times i'm like oh i i think i would be happy in that department then i saw a photo of myself this last week and i was like i've got to make changes yeah yeah. Um, well it could have been a bad photo could be bad jeans too i think i had bad jeans could have been bad jeans the kind you wear (laughs) but when you find out what some of these celebs are doing you're like it is not attainable by the everyday person oh my with, God, a, no. with a budget problem no. yeah and plus they have a trainer they have a private chef yeah but i think a lot of that i think a lot of thin culture really does go back to the 80s i don't think we see it as much in the 70s i think no. because there was a lot more women that were in like homemaking roles also plastic surgery was not prevalent until the 80s i think i think yeah people they started they were doing started, facelifts then people were doing kind of like but lipo experimental yeah, like yeah. experimental plastic surgery or like like the classics. Yeah, like facelift. But but even then it was like you can't do too much plastic surgery because you're going to be Joan Rivers. You yes, know, it's like they didn't have the then, technology. I felt like Joan Rivers eventually it looked good on her. She By the and end, she later, was fine. She was fine. It, she wore it well. It caught up. It caught up. Yeah. But in <laughs> the, the beginning, technology. it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, of course, we're all seeing this phenomenon on TikTok now um, where, well, not phenomenon, but it's a, like a, a trend that's of the expose of women make less money in the workplace based on their physical appearance, like their weight. And I've I seen think that, that and I believe it. Yeah. Like, I think that that goes back to the 80s where it's like we see the trend of like super thin women. Women. We see um, women working more. Well, it's that fat phobia thing that I think a lot of people put on as like, if you're fat, you're a slob and you're lazy. Yes. And that's yeah. not true. Yeah. yeah. And it's the core of fat phobia. Yeah. Um, but but like I was and then also, like I was saying, you know, with the commercialization of like, well, now you can go to the gym. Now you can do this diet. And it's all like just capitalism. There, there's something about the capitalism of the 80s. And skinniness. I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. It because was like, you have to spend money 
to get skinny. Yeah, you have to have your gym membership. You have to have your yeah. like your noom, your protein your, powders. Yeah, your diet yeah. stuff. So your cold plunges. That's I think. Like, yeah, yeah, like the dark side of the eighties a little bit uh, in terms of like a lady journey yeah. of like what women had well, to go through. I think a lady journey now or that doesn't happen now as much is tanning beds. Oh my gosh, that's such an eighties lady journey. Yes, and <laughs> having one in your home to be yeah. like. Um, Katie, I think I'm going to start tanning. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I'm getting a tanning bed for my house. <laughs> well, I was watching the Oscars yesterday and mm. I was so blown away how orange everybody looked. Yeah. And I know it's spray tan and my friends have said this. I'd rather be orange than pasty white. Interesting. And I do agree with that sentiment. Yeah. I mean, I actually tan, like when I go to Aruba in the winter, that's always when I get like my little tan and I tan pretty well. But the more I do it, I notice it destroys your skin. Like, Yeah. And I don't want to get salami chest. Yes. Because I think most people forget like a lot of Older salami t- chest. <laughs> like, it just looks like salami <laughs> texture. And I think a lot of like older women when they start playing tennis aren't protective of that area. Because yeah. every time I go to the US Open, I'm like, there's a lot of salami chest <laughs> happening out here. I feel like I'm gonna have that. I, I think always it's inevitable. get burned on my chest. Yeah. It's the thinnest layer of skin and it's always kind of forgotten about and it's just like exposed. But like I this is something I've been thinking about lately. I'm like, I think I might start doing spray tanning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for I'm it. I'm going to try it. Just try it out. Go light. But you're like every just time a few degrees you do, it's so nerve wracking to go on these routes because I'm so nervous the time that I do it and I show up, everyone's like, Hey Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like staining everything on people's yes. furniture yeah. and stuff like that. Like it's yeah. embarrassing. Oh, it's great. It just comes off. Yeah. Or you have, I have a joke now about like the, the your tanner coming off and you just look like a giraffe, like yeah, a messed up giraffe, like just spots. Oh my God. Or like it's sometimes it'll just rub off and then you've got like brown little sweat balls yeah. happening. Ew. It's so Ew. bad. That feels more like with the tanning lotion I will say yeah. than the spray tan. But I've actually never gotten a spray tan. Uh, again, I, I do tan naturally but I'm starting to get like the sun damage of like oh, I have like yeah. the white spots of where yeah. like my salami fat deposits yes yeah. yeah I have those where I'm like oh I guess I have a new mark on my leg there <laughs> do you know that most people have a freckle I think it's right here on their forearm really yeah there's a I don't know. Everyone's like, I saw this one time and I was like, oh my God, I have it. And then I was noticing most right people. Yeah, most people <gasps> have a freckle. I have a small this, one. On these areas. Wow. Oh, yeah. I see one of my little salami spots is coming out. <laughs> Anyway, tying it back to the eighties, that's they had no sin, they had no sun care in the eighties. Oh, you were just like base tanning, I like was. you were just burning, and you're like put that's baby my base oil tan. on. Yeah, baby oil. I remember lying out in the balcony of my parents' house with baby oil on, and it would be like summer in, in the Houston? Texas sun. <laughs> my gosh, <laughs> wild! Being like you're like you're gonna cook your inside. I would get so it would be so gross though. Oh my gosh. But that was, I guess, you know, that was the way. The look, yeah. And then that's the thing too. Like, I've heard that too. Like, people start getting, they call it tanorexic. And then I've also heard blondorexic where you can't stop going blonder and blonder. Oh my gosh. I feel like that would happen to me. I'd be like, I must reach platinum. Well, I think what ends up happening is your eye kind of gets used to it and you're like, I think it's fading and I need to go more next time. Mm. And then uh, eventually you're you're just not in a reality. <laughs> Oh my it's God. like the plastic surgery addiction yeah. where you're like, my cheekbones must be bigger. Well, I think, yeah, I think that's what happens in the filler department is they're yeah. not realizing until you have 20 people, 20 million people on TikTok doing um, like docs about your face. Yeah. Being, yeah. Like I, I watched all leading up to the Oscars, how Emily Blunt went too far with their filler. And I'm like, wow, can you imagine going on TikTok and then find people doing like true crime doc series on your face? Yeah. <laughs> on your buckle fat <laughs> removal. <laughs> Like, here's where she went wrong. You're like, guys, let me be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I know. I love like the the amount of tabloid stuff that is ubiquitous now because of TikTok is just insane because now it's not like, oh, something I'm interested in. Now it's like I can become famous. Yeah. By this... just reading blind items. Yeah. It's insane. I And then when I hear some of these blind items, I'm like, is this even good to know? 
Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just stuffing like, my so head and now. So, that, yeah, um, doesn't wipe their ass, and or like the one where like Kim Kardashian's butt smells like pennies. Yeah, <laughs> you're like okay. You're like, yeah, I th- I don't need to know that. That's pushed out a fact that I had in my mind about feminism <laughs> in the seventies. <laughs> Um, I want to say one movie that was my favorite from the 80s, which was very formative from my childhood, was Ninja Turtles. Did you ever see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? No. I That's my brother, who okay. is 1984. Okay. And so I think I was a little too old. for. I was more for Gem, Truly Outrageous. Oh, okay. Punky Brewster. Yes, Punky Brewster was such an, yes. she was such an icon. Those were my programs. I I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I have to say it is a kids movie. Okay, it came out in eighty eight. Okay, so it's towards the tail end. It's very much in the full spirit of the eighties because early eighties you feel like it's still the seventies. Really, well, yeah. And uh, TV shows in the eighties got weird, like Alf. Uh, strange. My my cousin is an alien. A small wonder. I we have a robot daughter. Yeah. Uh, out of this world where they yeah. There was a lot of um like departure from reality. Like there's yes. the, also that big fantasy movie genre of like I'm thinking of that movie where it's um Tom Cruise is like a young guy and Tim Robbins is like this devil character. It's like called like Far and Away or like Lost the Magical Forest or something. It was like oh, some, Willow. Oh, that's another one. Yeah. That's another that I love that genre in the 80s of just like far out fantasy like yes. Conan the Barbarian. Dark Crystal. Dark Crystal. Oh I my love god. Conan the Barbarian. Oh my god. You There's... watch it you're like, "Oh, what's he doing? I don't even <laughs> care." I'm horny and I can't even describe. Yeah. I'm 7. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but Ninja Turtles, though, I remember watching it and being obsessed with it when I was like three or four. So the, I was watching it, you know, in the very late 80s. Okay. But it's so funny. It's rated, I think, PG or PG-13. I rewatched it because, of course, April O'Neil is like the character. You know, she's like this a quintessential, iconic late 80s woman where she, she's a reporter. She's a professional. She has a job. Yes. She's almost like Sigourney Weaver in um, the Ghostbusters movie. You yeah. Know? She's or like aliens. That same, yeah, yeah. Like that same Just- archetype. And like the abuse that she she gets slapped in the face like the guy that is the lead character like won't leave her alone until she falls in love with him yeah it is so misogynistic when you look back at it you're like oh my god i cannot believe that this was a kids movie it's yeah. crazy where you're you're like i yeah this is quite adult for yeah, some of this for, stuff that's I'm happening. I'm three years old. Yeah. Like, I love the turtles. Well, we just watched Gremlins and that had this, they had the same, we were reading up on like the Wikipedia page of the controversy of mm-hmm. it. And it's true where you're like, they put that as a PG movie. Yeah. What year did that come out? I think I'm going to say 1984 because I remember yeah. my mom or was about to deliver my brother. Yeah, and like so we the... went as a side to get sidetracked. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> to go watch a movie with my dad or something. But it was scarier. I remember watching it now and you're like, this is actually quite violent. Yeah. And isn't and the, the storyline is sad. The girl's dad was climbing in the chimney as Santa Claus and he died and he was just in there dead. Like that is a horror movie. Yeah, That was a sad. That's yeah, we were not like, for kids. Let's revisit this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then they're just like brutally chopping each other up. And yes. it's a scary monster. And then other like I watched this other movie. It was a, a Sylvester Stallone movie from the 80s called Cobra. OK. It's. I was watching it and I was like, you know, I know movies are violent now. Yeah. This is actually the most violent movie I've ever seen. And I remember my dad just taking it me to the movie theater and just <laughs> watching it and not thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was no kids like ratings in the eighties. And even if there were like, didn't matter. It was like the seatbelts of the eighties. It's like you choose. Yeah. We'll it's your choice. It yeah. Buckle up. It's the law, but I mean, it's new. Well, so that's, that's been the trend for ba- like baby TikTok lately is like, don't have any stuffed animals, no blankets or any of that in the um, bassinet and mm. the, or the crib. And then the people have photos of them in the 90s where they're sleeping in a festoon of stuffed animals. Yeah. And like their leg is like out of the crib. <laughs> yeah. And their yeah. head is not yeah. even like supported in the car seat while there's like other stuffed animals jammed in with them. Yeah. Growing up in the 80s was a dangerous time. Yeah, there's no regulation. Yeah, it yeah. was like your toys just all had lead paint. Yeah, you You're had no idea. Insane movies. Oh yeah, and that 
yeah, like light porn. I remember, we watched a lot of revenge movies growing up. Okay, like Charles Bronson taking back the night because his wife was like brutally raped and murdered. Yeah, and then he's like <laughs> taking back the night. But we would just watch this. Yeah, yeah. Even like the Goonies. Like the Goonies is like a classic. That was an '80s movie, right? Like, yes, such a classic '80s movie where you're like, oh, this is a feel good movie, and then you're like, it's just people chasing kids to like hurt them. Yeah, and like there's um a a mal formed man who's being kept in a cage like <laughs> we all just accepted it like yeah that was that was chunky boy or whatever yeah, they named him at Chunk. the end yeah. like and then just to they were like hanging out with like skeleton carcasses yeah with monk's treasure yeah, yeah. And, and then like always also the trope of like the fat kid of the 80s yes. too was like we just we're just mean and hateful to him because he's bigger <laughs> he won't stop eating it's yeah, like what was happening yeah brutally like, mean well, lord of the flies insane. like insane yeah. well that was a another one people brought up when you watch home alone you're like these pranks that kevin McAllister is pulling are like vicious yes like he's this uh, a classism there's yeah. a classism coming into play here <laughs> where I, I saw something and i feel like that's technically 80s because i know that movie was like 1990 exactly yes. yeah like it was in my middle were, school years they somebody did a thing of kevin McAllister's the neighborhood that they lived in the size of the home and it was like oh you would have had to come from generational wealth to even be able to afford to live here and meanwhile amount. the wet bandits are just trying to feed their family yeah. <laughs> they're just poor working class people yeah. Well, somebody there's a theory online or uh, about uh, Kevin McAllister's dad. They believe is a uh, arms dealer. Oh, interesting. Yes, that they makes were sense. like he went. If you think he's going here and he went there, and there's like other background information that also arms dealers deal go to as well. And That's I was like, hilarious. That's a fun. I love thing that to throw out there. That movie has had a, a renaissance. It's a great movie. It's a good. It's a good movie. It plays with the tra- like that was an also another fantasy in the eighties. I thought was the I'm forgotten at a mall and I have to stay here I overnight. Can live an adult life. Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of no parents around. Oh, legend! That I just remembered. Legend, that was yes. the movie that I was thinking of. With it's Tom Cruise is like an elfin man. Okay, and then Tim. Tim Robbins, I forget. He's like a British From Bill Durham. No, that it's Tim. He's like a British guy. He's in a ton of movies. He was in Clue. Tim Curry. Tim Curry. Oh my God! Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Tim Robbins. That's a completely different movie. <laughs> I was like, hmm. huh? I can't picture him being in fantasy movie. Yeah, he's always like, huh? Tim Curry is like a devil kind of guy, and they're just yes. like in a magical forest. It's very like the labyrinth too, where it's like that eighties like rock opera meets fantasy. Like, yeah, the Alice labyrinth. in Wonderland kind of like. I need yes. to get back to where I, or the I'm on a hero's uh, Wizard of Oz situation. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, labyrinth is another one that you rewatch and you're like, oh, oh. I think he's molested her <laughs> this is a giant cod piece yeah yes it was but, not david bowie's finest moment he's a hero sure yeah sure he's there for her but there's sexual undertones yeah. happening to inappropriate jessica connelly inappropriate jennifer connelly jennifer connelly I'm becoming a mom i know and then you're like jessica well, connelly jessica well i said tim robbins I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I know. And then Jennifer Connelly, the only other movie that I've ever seen her in, it was um, Requiem, Requiem for, for a Dream. You're like, well, that's a that is a reasonable path for her to go from being she's being molested by David Bowie. Now she's addicted to heroin. So that's what would happen. That's what would happen. Well, I thought about that movie recently. I was like, do you think she'd do that movie now? Oh, I wonder. That movie was so upsetting. It's so upsetting. And then it's like, does that need to be? portrayed do, do you know what i mean do like, we need to have the ass to ass scene <laughs> I, or just allude to it yeah just uh, how about well, she like to oh it. my ass to... hurts yeah. she comes out of the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah aronofsky there's a lot of gratuitous in all the, of his movies there's I think. a lot of male filmmakers that were like she we actually need to show in real time her getting sexually assaulted we're like movies and the 30s up until like the 50s, I think if anything like that happened, the camera would slowly drift up to the moon. Yeah. And yeah. you'd be like, got it. She's getting sexually assaulted. But sometimes I'm like, this is actually horrific for the actress to endure. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, I know it's um, what was I just going to say about the. uh the oh, uh, girl with a dragon tattoo. Right. You're like, and let's, yeah, let's, let's fade out. <laughs> but 
But anyway, let's go ahead and wrap up on this one. Right. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who listened to Lady Journey. Please well, like you. and subscribe and stay tuned for more amazing episodes. We're going we're, we're going above deep. and beyond. We're not doing we're not doing spring cleaning this year, okay? Right. We've done it. Yeah. We're going two years in a row, right? Further. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I will be cleaning, but I won't be talking about it. Yeah. But we will be doing an episode that you can listen to while you do that, because we know yeah. you are. We Yeah. And we hope. And I will be doing, too. Yes. <laughs> we all will. All right. Lady Journey. Lady Journey. Lady Journey.